Hello and welcome back to what's bubbling is in. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at progressive web apps. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We can find information about that in the code section. So we go past the templates, past the CDN, past the help section, and into the tools. So these are the types of things that we can use along uh, with Zim, like model view controller, node package manager, and here's the mobile part, progressive web apps and capacitors. So if we press that, I think they both go to the same page. So Zim apps run on mobile in a browser, and here are features that allow us to do that. So lots of features that you guys already know about with respect to Zim, but you can read how, how we can use those nice features in mobile. Progressive web apps, are a way that we can look at a web app, but as a mobile app. So we can save it to the home screen of the mobile devices. And when you open it up from there, it doesn't show a browser anymore. So it just, the whole screen is taken up with the app. And we can also access things like uh, the GPS and I don't know, other features of the phone as well. We've made one called Groovity, and these other companies are making progressive web apps as well. Can go in the store as a trusted web activity. That's on Android, though. And Apple has a way uh, of dealing with progressive web apps as well. So you'll have to look that up. So here's information on progressive web apps if you want to see more about that. And what we're looking at today in the bubbling is the Zim Progressive Web App Basic Example. And there's a zip file. And it's got these parts. There's the app, which is basically just Zim like normal. But we need to add what's called a manifest. This is an extra JSON file and call that. It's quite simple compared to how we used to do it. And a service worker, not bad. You just copy the code that we're using and switch a few things. This will cache the files and allow you to, this is another advantage of a progressive web app, is you can use it offline um, because what we're doing here. And there's also an add to home screen message um, that uh, we'll show you. And Lighthouse is a tool that's, that judges how good your app will be, how responsive it is, how quick it is, and you need a good Lighthouse score as well um, to be, uh, counted as a progressive web app. So those are some extra links. We currently have Touchy in the app stores, I think, but this was done through PhoneGap Build. And PhoneGap Build is how we used to do all this, but PhoneGap Build, Adobe has stopped advancing PhoneGap Build, so it, it won't handle the latest Apple stores. It's like, great. I eh. guess I don't blame them. It was a free service. And it must have been hard to keep up with all that stuff. It was based on Cordova. So a replacement for that is Capacitor. It costs money as opposed to being free. And uh, there's various older steps to publish, like 73 steps to publish primarily on Apple involving private keys and certificates and provisioning profiles. and blah, 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 blah. So you can go that route if you really have to. But um, we're suggesting that you try progressive web apps and it'll be much easier. And that's what this bubbling is about. So here's the example. I can show you that. It's called Reaction. So this is it loaded in Chrome, but using the mobile toggle mobile here. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, Chrome thinks this is a mobile app. And there it is saying, this is a progressive web app, PWA. Please add to home screen as an app. And we've got a little icon that matches the Apple icon of this. So if you're on a mobile device, you find uh, there's an add to home screen. It's right at the top of the browser in Apple. And it's in the little dot, dot, dots in Chrome. And when you add it to the home screen and run it, you will not get this message. So I'll show you how we've worked that out. You won't get the message. Instead, you'll get to play the app. So here's the app. It says, drag circle to matching color. And then we have to wait for the circle. 
And here we go. And then we drag the circle to the matching color. It's a reaction game. Uh, that was pretty easy. Same one, huh? <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to say, well, this is not a very fun game. After all, there we go. At least the blue moved. They're not always blue circles, though. This is totally random. There we go. <laughs> Just have to have three blue circles at the start uh, with three targets exactly the same. Uh, anyway, as as you can see, so that's a reaction game, and we're we're counting people's reactions down here. Uh oh, I'm I'm blowing my reaction. Uh, oh, that's too bad. Anyway, one more time. If we refresh that, here's the message we get at the beginning. This is a progressive web app, PWA. Please add to home screen as an app. Um, when you're viewing this in a browser on mobile, it shows the browser Chrome around the outside, like the extra, uh, you know, the uh, whatever, the, the interface up top of the browser to type in a URL and stuff, a URL bar, things like that. Uh, when you run it, when you save it to your desktop, it saves an icon there. And when you open it from that icon, it doesn't show the browser. We, we're opening it up in true full screen. Yay! And on Apple as well. Yay! Um, one of the things that uh, is still kind of being worked out here is on Chrome, we can lock orientation. On Apple, we're still waiting for them to figure out how the bloody hell to do that. So it's like, come on, Apple. Uh, so we don't have orientation lock on Apple. Uh, CSS is coming along with attempts to uh, to orient to lock orientation. We can we can fake it by we can find out what the orientation is and present a rotated view of our app. So you know that that can be done, and um, it may be that we look into ways to help you out uh, solve that in the end. At the moment, we don't have that running. So you're always welcome to plan for adaptive design and then change your design based on orientation. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so let's go in and take a look at the code. Now, this has been updated recently. Uh, how do I reduce this? Uh, this has been updated recently. So you'll want to come back and look at this if you were doing the Zim Progressive Web App example um, previously. So here's some links as to it. But what we found is uh, just recently, anyway, when we tried on Android, the, the tests that we had been doing on Android weren't sort of doing the automatic sa save a message saying save to the desktop thing. And instead, it seems that they've replaced that system, I guess, uh, at least in the latest uh, you know, Chrome on, on Android, uh, with a dot 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 message saying add to home screen now so uh, so be it <laughs> so anyway some of this stuff in here has changed and may, maybe not what is listed in the tutorial anymore so step one is the manifest right here and there's it calls the manifest.json and here it is and these are the names that will show up on your icons on your desktop it also has a start URL there. We're starting with an index. And there's the display standalone. So when this is downloaded, it's going to end up displaying standalone. And we're locking the orientation of portrait. Once again, Apple, in its wonderful bloody wisdom, has decided that they're not going to support that at the moment. <laughs> All through mobile history, this has just been the case. You know. Apple problems. Apple, 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 Apple. Crap, 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 crap. Anyway, I'll try not. To. OK, that's the last of my tirade against Apple, call it. Anyway, we've got a bunch of icons as well that are listed there. We do have in the zip file a right there, make PWA icons JSX. And that will go into Photoshop. And you can pass in an icon raw like that, or you know, you, up, you drop on an icon, a big icon. And it will make a bunch of icons for you that match these sizes of names and folders. So there's instructions in there on how to how to do that. All right. So the man that's the manifest. Not bad, huh? Manifest. And then step two, there's basically meta tags that will try and do various things as well uh, for you as much as possible. 
and specify various icons for Apple. Fave icons and make it web app capable. Yes, etc. Some point, I don't know, you, you can read about it on Stack Overflow, for instance, you know, how to try and make Apple pay attention to your, your um, orientation. There might be something new coming. It's in the specs or something where we can specify uh, a meta tag that will that will do it. And then there's another one where we specify a CSS, but as, as far as I can tell, none of them is quite working yet. So, so there. Here is the service worker. So a service worker will intercept uh, will intercept calls to a server. And if we've already got it cached on their machine, so if it's running on their mobile device, there's no point in going off to the server and downloading stuff if we've already got it cached. And what that does is it makes the web app work as fast as a native app because we're not downloading anything. Everything is coming from the device. So this is uh, just boilerplate stuff. You would copy, uh, if I can select the bloody thing, you would uh, copy um, this and use it. And there it is calling. That's the location of the service worker.js. So you don't need to worry about what that actually means. And here's the service worker right here. Again, modified from this tutorial. Here are the files that we're going to cache, including our font. Our font is in the same file as the index page. And then we've got our libraries. Uh, there's zimcat. There's CreateJS, and we've got a couple smaller ones with the game. And, and if you had images in here, you would have an assets folder, and you would say, quote, assets slash, and then list all your images as well. And that would then cache those and load them from cache rather than going out over the internet. So the benefit is two, two, two benefits. <laughs> Yay! Faster, because it's coming from cache. And two, you don't even need internet because it's coming from cache. So that's the idea. And all this stuff is just boilerplate. So just leave that how it is. And that's your service worker. So those are the hard parts, I suppose, is the manifest. That was pretty easy. Copy some stuff, change some things, and the service worker to handle that. Make sure that you're loading your scripts from those libraries that you said you were loading them from. <laughs> Okay, so we don't we don't use the CDN for Zim and CreateJS because that would be over the web. Instead, we're loading them locally from a libraries folder. So if you take a look at the zip file, there's a libraries folder, and in the libraries folder are our files. There's the icons. So they're all all these things are local. There's the font right there, and various fave icons. There's the index page manifest and service worker all within the PWA directory. Coming down, there's the font and mentioned that uh, this needs to be local. So remember, keep that local. Zim is doing just, this is the game. It's just doing what Zim always does. And then down below, we have uh, the last step of the PWA here is we're testing if we're on mobile and it's not one of these things right here. So these are three ways that we might be loading from the desktop of the mobile device or the home screen of the mobile device. So the first one is for Android. If it's in a mode of standalone, then that means we're loading from the uh, loading from the home screen. And see, what we've got is this pane right here that's saying this is a progressive web app. Well, if we're already loading from the home screen, we don't want to load this pane. So basically, we're saying as long if it's mobile and we're not loading from the home screen, and this is for Apple, we're not loading from, it's not window.navigator.standalone. And then this is another way to do it on Android an alternative way that might catch more on Android. This is from like Stack Overflow, uh, collecting those things. So if we're not loading already from the home screen and we're on mobile, that's the Zim mobile test, then show a pane. 
that says this is a progressive web app. And we've moved the label over just a little bit on that pane, and we provided an icon. That's that icon with a little download button thing. That's this part right here. Okay, so there's the pane, this message, and there's the little download icon thing, which looks the same as the Apple's current uh, icon. So that's the extra bit that we've added in Zim to pop up that pane. If we are doing a full mode, which we are doing, uh, as in this is this this is Zim in full mode, so that different different uh, scales or whatever, I guess those two aren't that different. iPhone X, see, it still looks nice. Uh, we put the logo up top. We put this stuff at the bottom, and and it works on all the sort of formats there. But that's full mode, and we're we're changing things when we resize. So when we resize, we're changing our layout. We're using the layout class. And we also want to make sure that we've scaled the PWA pane. This is a pane. So if there is a PWA pane, then scale it to the stage 105, just so that that goes right off the edge. Normally, a pane has corners on it. And we didn't want the corner, so we just made it a little bit bigger than the stage, and that makes a strip that goes right across there. This is also a pane. It's the instruction thing. And then yet yeah, this is a yet another pane that's popping that up and saying what to do. So we are also scaling that um, the second pane there, the instructions pane. Okay, so now we're scaling the PWA pane. That we've made here if if we have made it and ladies and gentlemen that's that's it which is pretty amazing considering what we used to have to go through to get things onto mobile so i would highly recommend looking at pwas uh, with zim on canvas as ways to make alternative mobile apps we're not putting them in the store although you can look into trusted web apps to put them into the android store uh, for the Apple Store, you'll have to read up on that. I think there's a pathway for it, or there's uh, there's lots of um, directories now for PWAs. So maybe you know, maybe you can convince your client, hey, you don't need to be in the Apple Store. Just go into these directories. Look at look at all these big brands that are in these directories that uh, PWA directories. Don't bother. <laughs> just just put a link to it from from your you know from your site. Put a link to it. Don't bother with an app in the store anymore. You know, ah, forget that. That's just giving Apple money. Don't bother. <laughs> so that's that's my take on it anyway. I, I can't be bothered. You're competing with millions of other apps. It's just like yeah, whatever. That's that's so ten years ago as far as I'm concerned. Um, there you go. This has been a what's bubbling at zim and i am dr abstract hopefully that was fun for you come to zimjs.com slash slack if you have any questions or zimjs.com slash discord we'd love to hear from you you're welcome to come here uh come to those places and just hang out with us that would be super share some examples uh join the community cheers <laughs>